The Callisto Protocol is a third-person survival horror game that follows pilot Jacob Lee as his ship crash lands on Jupiter's moon of Callisto. The game is available on PC, PlayStation, and Xbox consoles. Atmosphere. The Callisto Protocol's immersion is brilliant, with the sound design doing a lot of heavy lifting to bring the environments alive. But the problem is that many of the game's environments just aren't creepy. Even with various bodies and strange viscera and growths covering things, the areas you traverse aren't imposing or foreboding. There's very little tension as the game progresses because Callisto Protocol just doesn't change, presenting nearly the same combat variety at the start as it does at the end, with only three or four enemy types in the whole game. Sir, we have to evacuate. Negative, we have to contain this. Not a single inmate is escaping on my watch. But sir, you don't understand. They're not inmates. Not anymore. There's very little to be afraid of, and even with things sneaking about in the vents above you, there's no fear of when it'll arrive. The soundtrack only comes in now and then as it's used extremely sparsely to enhance the atmosphere or provide a feeling of some kind, so the majority of the game you're left in a silence that doesn't manage to be eerie. The lighting is impressive, but the lack of other features meant that it didn't matter how dark it was if there was no fear of what was in that darkness. The game does a better job with the Lost Colony chapter, with a lot of the rundown and ancient tunnels below the prison being more unsettling looking, but it's a very small part of the game. Ultimately, the Callisto Protocol's atmosphere is severely lacking, if present at all. That's no Harry Mason's. Scares. The game's scares boil down to cutscenes and jump scares with the rest of the responsibility put on the combat. Callisto Protocol is roughly seven hours long and due to the lack of atmosphere it really struggles to get any of its scary moments to land. Many times it was either predictable lengths of the game's pacing or when something did catch you by surprise, it fell flat. The setups changed time and time again but the delivery was nearly always an enemy running at the player. There were a few jump scares that worked, but for the majority of the game, it managed to be at best a little creepy. The combat was gory and could sometimes be intense, but the regular enemies were more of a chore to deal with thanks to the repetitive melee combat that, whilst initially satisfying, didn't change much throughout the game, and became a bit tedious as time went on. Overall, enemy designs felt a little generic, looking like boiled humans more than monsters. The bosses managed to be more intense, but still didn't manage to be actively frightening to fight. The cutscenes were very impressive, but again, they were exciting instead of frightening, which leaves the game in the awkward position of, through its own design, feeling uneventful. That's still no Harry Mason. Sound design. The sound design is immaculate, with a brilliant but sadly underused soundtrack that encompasses the strings and various unnerving orchestral tones that grace the dead space and goes further to include some of the more uniquely instrumented pieces that really sound fantastic and help the cinematic moments throughout the game. Uh, 
The sound effects are incredible, with the sound of doors opening being chunky and metallic, and as stated earlier, the sound effects go a very long way to making the game's environment believable. The gunshots and melee impacts are again really sickeningly good, with stomping corpses and striking enemies having disgustingly realistic crunches and squelches. Because after this job, we're never going to have to work another day in our lives. Well, I guess you got it all figured out. I guess so. Come on, man, what is this? Huh? Back and forth, Callisto to Europa, all this additional security. It's a prison moon, Max. They take the security pretty serious. And what about the attacks? Huh? How do you explain that? By the outer way? They've been hitting targets all over the sector for the past six months. The voice acting is surprisingly good, and the actors do a great job of their performances, even if the characters themselves are difficult to like. The reverb and directional audio are pretty much perfect, and really, the sound design is immensely impressive. That's one Harry Mason. Gore. There's a great deal of gore in the game, from using the telekinesis to throw enemies into spinning drills and spiked walls, and the finishing moves of melee weapons will smash in a skull or break a bone to cripple an enemy before finishing them off. Sometimes the gore effect seemed a little lacking, with stomping on enemies resulting in a blood spurt whilst the enemy stays stationary. Throwing enemies into a drill results again in the same blood spurt, as if contact with the drill liquidized them instantly. The feedback to gory things was sometimes a little unfulfilling, but the combat was still pretty satisfying and the death animations though were fantastic, as clearly a lot of time had been put into them. That's two Harry Masons. Story. After a stowaway aboard Jacob's ship causes it to crash, killing his co-pilot in the process, Jacob seeks help in the local prison colony, but instead is arrested and taken in as a prisoner. While it's pretty compelling to begin with, since the game begins with a lot of mystery and events that do a great job of evoking that feeling of injustice, the game's story only pops up now and then and follows a bit of a generic plot about immoral science experiments that were a bit predictable considering the situation that unfolded. Main characters like Jacob and Danny don't really evolve or change much as these things go on, and some stay pretty unlikable all the way through the game, until the very end where it does a plot twist to reveal things you don't know, but it feels way too late in the story to redeem them of their attitudes the entire game. There's some audio logs to listen to, and some of them are sort of interesting, but they are kind of forgettable. The story feels unfulfilling when it ends with a lot of loose ends and questions left unanswered. Making the final score 2 out of 5 Harry Masons. The game is unable to shake its ties to Dead Space, but doesn't have the same care applied to the right things to make it comparable. On its merits alone, some features of it are extremely well executed, but the parts that matter most are sadly left neglected. Again, I'd like to remind you, this whole thing is down to my opinion of horror games. If you don't share this opinion, then that's cool, I get it. I'd like to point out that whilst I clubbed everything to death, I did not leave anything alive and advise you don't either. There are more horror reviews in the pipeline and thanks for watching. Let's go check out Bumps in the middle of the night. Peace.